did your greatest. And knowing the creature known as Bigfoot, when Roger Patterson and his friend Bob Gimlin first set out to find Bigfoot, they never expected to accidentally stumble upon him so easily on the first day. Armed on horseback with a video camera and a single gun between the two of them, the pair set out into the woods to find the elusive creature known as Bigfoot. According to their stories, in late October of 1967, they were heading upstream when Roger's horse sensed danger. It bucked and brayed and was hard to control for about 30 seconds straight before it calmed down enough to resume the search. A short while later, they both saw a 7-foot creature crouching near the water about 25 feet ahead of them. Roger told his friend Bob to get the gun out and protect him while he got the camera from his horse's saddlebag to record. Roger quickly disappeared ahead of Bob while his friend followed on horseback with the gun. Bob had to cross a creek and the horse was being cautious of the water while Roger ran ahead. I'm getting that feeling that it did not end well. He probably drowned or something. The footage is shaky because Roger was running towards the creature while he was filming. While he ran closer, Bigfoot looked over its shoulder at them with a casual regard. Roger said he saw an expression register across the creature's face that was a mixture of resentment and disgust. He said that he felt like the creature was giving them a little bit of a break for the time being. But if they came much closer, or if they continued to follow him much further, then he was going to make sure that the monster would have taken offense and defended itself. As Roger recalls, the beast looked over its shoulder at them a total of three times. The third and final glance is what they caught on camera. Bob had caught up to him on horseback at that point, and was even beginning to pull ahead, but Roger began calling for Bob to stay with him instead of going any further. He didn't want his friends straying too far away because he wasn't sure if there were other creatures nearby, and Bob was the only one with a weapon. Maybe the creature they were following was small for its species, and an even larger mate was nearby. Maybe the seven foot tall monster was only a child, and its parents were twice as large. With this thought, they decided to quickly take plaster casts of the creature's footprints and call it a day. Although many people have tried to debunk their story in video, nobody has ever managed to successfully do so convincingly. People have stepped forward to say it was a hoax, but they have all been disproven over time. Meanwhile, university studies have concluded that the creature seen in the video is real. Critics say that it's unlikely that Roger and Bob stumbled across Bigfoot, but scientists say that it's not far-fetched at all. The two went to where Bigfoot was last reported and there he was, simple as that. Most researchers agree that this tape cannot be a person in a suit because the creature is way too realistic for any special effects that they had back in the 60s. Unlike 1960s monster flicks, this monster had realistic limbs and walked just like an overgrown ape-like creature should. A normal sized person in a suit would not have been able to imitate that posture. Even if Roger and Bob had a million dollars, the technology to create these types of special effects did not exist in the 1960s. Yeah, true. So I'm pretty sure that creature there was probably not somebody dressed inside. How could you even fake an effect like that? That stuff did not exist in those times. So, that creature had to have been real. That was literally the 1960s. So there was no computers. No YouTube, no 3D art, so it isn't possible that was special effects. Therefore, a lot of people believe it's real and that Bigfoot really exists. Number 1. Frank Gets Shafted There's a YouTuber named Frank who runs a channel called Exploring Abandoned Minds, and it is exactly what the name says. There are tons and tons of videos on this channel of Frank exploring creepy minds and exploring when exploring the architecture abandoned as he property walks or places. The it camera. sometimes does lead to trouble. This Frank guy is super brave, especially though, the fact he is by himself. Frank has a long history of serious videos. I mean, dozens upon dozens of them, where nothing out of the ordinary happens, and he generally comes across like an honest guy who does not seem like the type of person to play a prank at all whatsoever. With that said, of all of the very legitimate looking videos on his website, there are two videos in particular that stand out from the rest. These are the two videos that document his paranormal experiences while he was at an abandoned This happened in, in Nevada. Nevada. Anywhere there could be really crazy places. In 2013, Frank decided to explore the abandoned Hornet Mine. At first he writes that this mine shaft is from the 1800s, but after doing some more research later on, 
he says in one of the videos that he found out it was actually from the 1970s or 1980s. Anyway, when he gets to the Hornet Mine, he takes one look inside of the entrance and quickly determines that it looks way too menacing to go very deeply into. But since he came all the way out there, he figured that he would go in just a little for a quick peek. As I ventured, hesitantly, down the tunnel, he later recounts, it felt more and more wrong. He describes almost immediately feeling a quote-unquote negative energy. He doesn't get much further into the shaft before he becomes sufficiently sketched out enough to want to leave. Just a few more feet and I'll go, he reasons with himself. Frank shines his light down the tunnel for one final look. He sees a long row of chains that start in front of him and extends further and further down the length of the tunnel until it becomes completely pitch black even under his high-powered flashlight. At this point he writes that quote-unquote, I felt as if something was watching me, something that was sinister. Swallowing his fears for just one moment longer, Frank bravely turns around to film an artistic shot of the light as it pours forth from the entrance. When he turns back around, however, he is horrified to come face to face with plenty of evidence that he's not alone. What? He's not alone? Somebody else is in there with him? Who else would be inside that mime? This better not scare me. Who the hell was in there with him? All of the chains were motionless before he turned around, but now, one of the chains in the far back is swinging wildly as two closer chains sway slightly as well. It's as if something from deep within the mine had been running towards him at a fast rate of speed and then had slowed down as it got closer. Frank feels the temperature drop all around him and wisely decides to get out of there fast. However, Frank was brave enough to return to the Hornet Mine next year to conquer his fears once and for all. This time, he was determined to go all the way to the back of the mine. And what he experienced when he got there was a million times more scary and surreal than anything from his first foray. If it's too scary you need to just leave. That area has been blocked off for years for a reason. That property is destroyed and shut down. Of known trouble was afoot when a thick mist appeared out of nowhere and surrounds him about five minutes into the video. But he chooses to ignore it and continues to talk about the Hornet Mine's history and design at length while traveling deeper. He reaches the end of the mine shaft without much trouble at all, and he is taking a final shot of the area when something utterly insane and not of this world interrupts him. Out of nowhere, a haunting voice echoes all around Frank. In terms of volume, the voice sounds distant. Something does not want him in there, but if it was some homeless person, or a past enemy Frank Cotton was for years after him, and he didn't notice, I would be running for my life big time. If I heard my name called out of nowhere in some creepy area I shouldn't be exploring. Somehow close at the same time. The voice is heavily annoyed, as if they are giving Frank a ghostly lecture. Or even giving him one final warning. Frank's reaction is very authentic during these horrible events. He cusses without thinking at first, then he stops to listen for only a moment more. When the voice starts to talk to him some more, he immediately turns around to leave instead of sticking around. It really does not seem like he is acting in the slightest bit. As Frank is leaving, the voice finishes talking, and Frank hears other strange noises. He describes these noises as machinery, but other YouTubers have commented that it definitely sounds like a French police horn, which would have absolutely no place in a Nevada mine and only makes this video even stranger. Of course, they were terrified and scared for you. The fact like that this Frank English person even has the brave Venus to do that, not knowing After what he could be facing, video, it's not times, a good idea to visit a really Rishi old place, says, even if it was your favorite. Then you're going you to go inside, to anything Who could have you? happened to this guy. Like I said, there may have been people in there and would have grabbed him or something. These people that were in there could be one of those crazy criminals that want to do nothing, but hurt you. Now go. Frank certainly did go after that. He headed straight out of the mine shaft and onto YouTube, where he uploaded the haunting footage that would eventually make number one of this week's chills. I don't know why that one chain is swinging back there. Don't know if you can see that in the video or not. Look. What the f is that? 
Run and get out of there. Leave that scary mind. Run for your life.